Good morning, church. The Reverend Darrell Goodwin is a member of the United Church of Christ Board of Directors, Class of 2023. He serves as the Associate Conference Minister of the Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota Conferences and the Program Director for the Pension Board's Faith and Personal Finance Initiative. Reverend Goodwin is a Doctor of Ministry candidate at the San Francisco Theological Seminary. And family is very important to Darrell, especially his 84 years young grandmother who raised him in the church. We at Christian Fellowship welcome Reverend Darrell Goodwin to our virtual pulpit.
There we go. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm so grateful to be in worship with you all. I want to thank your wonderful pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. Hill, for inviting me to share space with you. That's a song that I feel like whenever something is happening in my life or outside of my life, I go back to that song because there's so much power in the belief of the words, some of the lyrics that are being sung, I told the storm. What, what speaks to me about that is a reminder that each and every one of us has a spiritual power to literally tell the things in our lives, you gotta go away. <laughs> Imagine that, you don't need somebody else to do it, you don't need me to do it, pastor to do it, somebody else. You, God has given you the very power to tell the storm, you got to go. You can't be here, you are no longer welcome here. The power does not belong to you. The power that God has put in me gives me that command. Man. And so I hope as you were listening to those words, they were not, I saw heads moving. I saw people wanting to get out of your seat. We were acting like we weren't on Zoom, but we were in the house of God, ready to give some praise, naming and claiming who and what God is. The danger of picking a song like that is that I forget that I actually have a different sermon that I was going to talk about in relation to this song, where the song gets so good that you think, well, look, the sermon has already happened. Um, Today, the, 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 the sermon is the power to end the storm. And we're gonna be reflecting on that passage um, that our young people so beautifully read and sang and just did anything. Anybody who thinks that the future of the church is in trouble, I'm gonna tell them, you just need to go to Christian Fellowship Congregational <laughs> because God is clearly using our young people to minister to us. Um, I grew up as a traditional preacher, I, I was formed in the Church of God in Christ, and we were told that you can't, you ain't really preaching unless you sing a little song. And so I'm going to sing a little song for us um, as we start, and I'll open with just a word of prayer. God, we need to tell the storm to go away. The storm of racial divide, the storm of Black and Brown folks losing their lives. God, the storm of injustice has to go. Renew in us a spiritual power that we can proclaim as the people of God that this storm has to go and we will have faith enough to believe that it truly will depart. God, touch us exactly where we are. Renew us exactly where we are and give us a word of life and nourishment. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The song, I'm just going to sing a couple of verses of this song that I think grounds the quick points I'll make in our time together in the word. I will make the darkness light before thee. Whatever's wrong, I'll make it right before thee. All your battles I will fight before thee. And the high place. God said, I'll, I'll bring it down. When thou walkest by the way, I'll lead thee. And on the fatness of the land, I'll feed thee. And a mansion in the sky, I'll deed thee and the high place. God said, I'll, I'll bring it down. People of God, if we pay attention to what's happening in the world right now, there are some high places. 
There are some high places that have chosen to lower themselves above us. Some of those high places are called white privilege. Some of those white places are called constant subjugation of black and brown bodies. Some of those high places are the fact that if you are black and brown in this country, you can't even go to the grocery store and assume that you will be able to come home safely. The high place, you can't even run and assume you'll be able to just go for a run and take care of yourself and you will be okay. Some of the high places are some of us know we have tried to merely go shopping for clothes and been followed around in the store. You tried to drive home from church and been afraid that maybe the police were going to be following you. And just because of who you were, then you could be detained or you could be watched or you could be ruined. Your life could be taken just because of who God created you to be. And I don't know about you, but I see that as a high place, a high place that somehow this environment called the United States of America has chosen to put folks who don't belong to a certain socioeconomic status on the lowest end of the totem pole, this high place that says that if you weren't born in a particular family, born in a particular color of skin, born with a particular type of name, somehow you cannot really lay claim to justice and freedom for all. It's a high place. And I believe that God has truly promised unto us that that is a high place that I will bring down. But if we look at the scripture, the storm, I want to posit to you that I don't just think that God is saying, I will bring it down. I think we are living in a moment in our history where God is bringing the high place down. Right before our eyes, we are seeing the majesty of God manifest in the earth. Right now, we are experiencing the people of God marching and pressing in the streets and then laws changing. Right now, we are seeing the people of God having enough faith to say, wall, you will come down. And we have watched the walls of injustice literally tumble before our eyes. We are telling the storm, you got to go. And the storm is passing. Oh, the storm is passing over, not as a thought, not as something that we're contem contemplating may happen, but God is saying, I will be the God of now. I will be the God of today. I will be a God of action. This is a moment where the spiritual understanding of who God is, is not just trapped in 66 books, but we're seeing it on the streets of Minneapolis. We're seeing it on the streets of Miami. We're seeing it on the streets of Chicago. We're seeing it in the streets of LA. We're seeing it here and even in Omaha, Nebraska, in Iowa and South Dakota, we are seeing God manifest today. Oh, I love that scripture. If my people, which are called by my name, will just humble themselves and pray, okay? It says, and turn away. We are turning away from accepting stuff that we should have never accepted in the first place. We're turning away from saying, well, we're just going to wait for glory to come and demanding that glory be present right now. We're not saying that our God will one day come and rescue us. We are saying our God is rescuing us right now. The ending of that scripture is he says, I will do what? Heal the land. And maybe some of us, we're still finding discouragement in what's happening. And it is a discouraging time, but I yet see God healing the land. I yet see God turning things around. I yet see God changing things. In this text, there are three quick things that I want you to hold on to. The first one is Jesus first declares that they are going in the boat to the other side. I want you to know that God is never going to put you in anything and not reveal to you where we're going. So if you are truly following the spirit, the spirit is going to lead you. So Jesus says, we're going to go to the other side. So you need to know where you're going. Because see, when you know where you're going, then you know what to expect. If they knew and heard Jesus say, we're going to the other side, then they would have anticipated it was going to be a rocky journey. They would have anticipated that some storm and some rain was going to come. If we are going to the side of justice, oh, we better know we're going to have to march in some streets. If we're going to the other side of freedom, we have to know we're going to have to sit in in the mayor's office and sit in at the governor's office, and we may have to take over some police station. If we're going to the other side, 
there is going to be some rain. There's going to be some pain. There's going to be some struggle and some strife, but we have to know where we're going. We're going to a place where after 400 years of oppression, black folks have said not so. After 400 years of creating laws and redlining where we can live and subjugating who you think we are, we are now reminding the dominant culture of who we are. And in that sense, we know where we're going. We're just experiencing some of the storm of what's happening. So point number one, know where you're going. We're going to freedom. I'm going to freedom. I hope y'all are coming with me, but here we are. We are going to freedom. So Jesus told him where we're going. You ought to know where you're going. This is the most important part of my three points. So if you don't remember the first one and don't remember the last one, remember this one. If you know where you're going, you have to know who you're going with. You have to know who you're going with. See, maybe if they heard Jesus say, okay, we're going over to the other side. When the storm came, they forgot who they were going with. Oh, that song that says, whose side are you leaning on? <laughs> I'm leaning on the Lord's side. And there's something about when you are leaning on the Lord's side. Oh, and the old folks used to say, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, leaning on the Lord's side because they wanted you to understand that I'm not doing this by myself. Do you think when folks fought for voting rights that they were doing it by themselves? Do you think when they were saying civil rights should be a law that they were doing it by themselves? Do you think even, let's go back to Harriet Tubman, when she was going through the midnight to rescue people on the Underground Railroad to freedom, even Harriet knew, I will not do this by myself. I might be in the midst of a storm, but I do not go alone. So as you understand the justice you want in your own life, no, you're not going alone. When you want to think about the respect that is due you because of who has created you, which is God, know that you are not going that journey alone. No matter what storm is happening in your life, you are not even enduring that storm alone. Right now, we're dealing with a racial pandemic and we're dealing with a health pandemic. I, sister earlier mentioned the loss of life. Even me, I've lost a family member to COVID-19. And I've been reminding my family, even in that, we are not enduring the storm of even the health stuff alone because God has been with us in the midst of everything that we have been experiencing, a source of calm, a source of reassurance, a source of reminding us that neither will I leave you nor will I forsake you. So you know where you're going and you know that God is with you. God says, I will choose the vulnerable and the marginalized. God says, I will be on the side of the widow and the poor. God says, I will be on the side of those with whom empire right? The local and the national, and even that person who lives at 1600 Pencil or Black Lives Matter Boulevard, even that person, God is saying, I even will go with you. Come on now, you're saying streets painted with Black Lives Matter. You can't tell me that God is not on the side of the oppressed, okay? When the White House is finally on the street naming the folks who built that house, Y'all don't want me to preach on Zoom today. You know that God truly is on the side of those who seemingly have been overlooked, those who've attempted to be overstepped. Come on. I tell folks, we are not watching protests right now. That may be a word you're comfortable with. I'm not. I'm saying we're watching uprisings. Because let me tell you something, when you protest something, you might just be standing against it. But when you are doing an uprising, that's saying you thought you had your foot on my neck, but I'm getting up. And when I get up, that means you gotta go what? Fall down. That means any structure, any law, any legal system, any government, any church practice, anything that's attempting to hold me down with the power of the living God, I will what? Rock. Rise up, and when you rise up with the power of the anointing of the living God, nothing can stand. So I'm almost done. Remember, you got to know where you're going. We're going to freedom. You got to know that you're not going by yourself. God is with us. Lastly, people of God, stop, stop demanding and learn to command. See, there's something about a demand. I, I, I'm going to write you 
a letter of demands. Demands can sometimes just be a derivation of requests. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll humbly think and consider. Jesus didn't say, excuse me, Storm, I'm wondering when you get a chance, will you calm? G the Bible says that Jesus commanded the storm with an action, be still. And so I feel like everything that has stood in our way as a people, this is a spiritual opportunity for us to command freedom and equality is here. To command, we will no longer be subjugated. To command, we will no longer be killed in the streets. To command that every position that a black and brown body wants to hold in this nation, it is ours. And watch what God is already doing. Not only did the storm calm, but I see seats in senates overturning. I see seats in Congress overturning. I see folks who thought they would never run for office starting the run for office. I see folks who never thought they would write a law changing the law. Come on, Brianna's law. Come on, somebody. George Floyd's law. I mean, these are laws in the name of the people whose name they said you couldn't say. Come on, somebody. These are things that the, the, the government has said would only be a certain way. But when God comes in and God begins to give you the spiritual authority to command, everything changes. Don't you know? It was natural that there was going to be a storm. And for some folks, it's only natural that I would be in charge. It's only natural that my family and my, my lineage would have authority to do this. Don't you understand that it's my legacy? That's what they thought. And so it was natural that the storm was going to move. It was probably seasonally appropriate that the storm would come while they were on that lake. But then Jesus came. <laughs> and anything that you falsely believe you've made natural, when you've decided that you've made yourself and your law God, when you've decided that you've created a country where you are also God, then we show up with Jesus. And the only thing we have to say is, I command this storm has to go. I command that this storm has to cease. I command that any injustice against me and my house has to end now. Watch that thing happen. So, where are we going? On our way to freedom. Who are we going with? Jesus. And ain't we ain't going asking. We're going commanding that liberation is here. Not on the way, not thinking about it, but it is here. We're not waiting for heaven to come so that we can one day be free. We are saying as the people of God, we command heaven right now so that we will live and walk in the fruit of the land. It will be ours. Milk and honey right now. <laughs> Freedom right now. Justice right now. Equality right now. Command it, people of God. And I want you to testify about it when you come back to this to Zoom. Okay, when we're doing prayers of the people, I want Pastor Hill to write me and tell me all of the testimonies you're giving about how you commanded the storm to end and it stopped. <laughs> No matter where you are, I don't care if you're doing it on Facebook, on the phone, chat, if you go out, wear the mask. But even with that mask, I want you to command <laughs> and watch God move. Thank you so much. We are so grateful, brother, for the gift of your word, the power of your word the encouragement that you have given us on this day for the journey that we all have ahead. Scripture says, did not our hearts burn within as the scriptures were explained to us and as we found encouragement in your word from God unto us. I believe you have just heard from the one of the next general ministers of the United Church of Christ. And so when y'all look up again and see the Reverend Dr. Darrell Goodwin, we'll say that he preached at our church when we was in that pandemic, y'all remember? Standing on the stage being our general leader for our denomination. Brother, thank you. Thank you so much for your friendship. Thank you so much for the gift of your presence in this space. And I would like to just encourage you 
all um, to stay a little bit after our worship service began, after our worship service um, today, we're going to have our fellowship hour. Um, and we will have a social justice talk back. Um, and Reverend Goodwin, along with Angel uh, Mua, uh, I believe is her last name, will be with us um, to have this conversation on gender inclusive pronouns and why they are important and how we ought to find ways of incorporating them into um, the way in which we have conversation and dialogue and speak with others. And so um, Reverend Goodwin will be there for that conversation and an opportunity for you to engage with him in a more personal way um, in that space there. Um, um, I'm gonna invite Reverend Goodwin to offer us a word of benediction and then ask if our moderator will have any additional announcements um, for us to receive before uh, Christy sends us off into our fellowship groups. Reverend Goodwin. What I would offer, it, Pastor, if you give me a moment to say one quick word. Um, thank you so much for your affirmation of me and my potential future in the UCC. I'll, I'll say you were prophetic if that ever happens, but I want to just acknowledge that Rachel, who's a member of your church and myself, we do serve on the United Church of Christ Board of Directors. And the only reason we serve on that is because there were four mothers and fathers, folks of color, Black folks, who marched before us so that we might have a place at the table and not only have a place at the table, but maybe dismantle the table that existed to build that which is to come. So my benediction is that I trust that God might use you at Christian Fellowship Congregational Church to become a part of the fabric of the United Church of Christ so that there are more Durrell and Rachel's and that there are more Reverend Dr. Hills and that there are more of our voices and our culture and our experience in the United Church of Christ so that we are no longer add-ons, but we become a part of the fabric of what God is doing in real time. Tell the storm it has to go and know that the storms in your life will cease because you've commanded them to do so. Walk with that, trust God in that, and live in that truth. God bless you. Reverend Goodwin, um, this is Randy Jones. Just want to say thank you. I'm not even going to try to say anything after that, brother. I mean, you you laid it out. Um, I mean, my heart is filled with emotions. I'm ready to to keep on throwing these shackles off my mind, man, because we've had them, and it's time for us to be free. You know, not just in physical, but in our mental and our thoughts. And you know, we're Christians, and we say that God's with us. So let's keep commanding. Let's make this thing happen right now. Enough is enough. Thank you so much for joining us, brother, on behalf of our church. Appreciate it.